It's time to say goodbye to that box full of receipts. It's time to say goodbye to stressing over your tax obligations. And it's time to say goodbye to expensive bookkeeping or accountant's fees. And it's time to say hello to the bookkeeper and responsible business owner within your lovely self because running a successful business is directly linked to operational efficiency. And of course, who doesn't want to outsource your bookkeeping? But the thing is, it is empirically proven that firms who make a profit then grow, improve their chances of long-term success. So I'm going to teach you how you can track your profit or loss by the month, the quarter, and for the year. Not only so you'll meet your tax obligations, but know for sure if you're making a profit before you grow, Firstly, I will explain how the spreadsheets are set up. Then I will show you how to edit the sheets to suit your personal business. I will input data into the spreadsheets so you can see how easy it is for you to be your own bookkeeper. Then I will show you how to quickly see your profit and loss and tax obligations. These spreadsheets are suitable for product-based businesses and service-based businesses. Okay, let's begin. When you download the Excel spreadsheet, you will land on this page, which is the notes. Look down the bottom left hand corner and you will see that we are in the notes tab. Then to the right of it is quarter one, then quarter two, then quarter three, then quarter four. And the last sheet is the year to date summary. Within this last sheet will be a summary that is automatically calculated for you from the preceding four quarters. If at any time you get stuck and want to watch this video again, just open up the spreadsheet and click on my logo at the top and it will take you back to the website. And remember, you can always share my URL, this page of the website with your friends or on Facebook pages so other new business owner ladies can benefit from doing their own bookkeeping. Now we're going to edit the document to suit your needs in your business. But before we go on to editing, I need you to save this original document as your own. So go to file in the top left hand corner of your computer screen, click on save as and save this spreadsheet within a folder called bookkeeping on your computer. This way you'll have this original spreadsheet saved to your downloads. Plus you'll also have your own spreadsheet within your folder. Now this may seem daunting, but I promise you, you'll make sense of it in no time. I'm just going to zoom where you can see an overview of this quarters layout. At the top, we have our income section. The next section down are our expenses. Then at the bottom of the page is a summary. We have your total sales from this section up the top, the GST collected from those sales. Then the next part is the total purchases from all our expenditure section here. Then in the bottom part here, we have our GST pay. And then in this cell here, it automatically calculates for you the amount you owe to the Australian Tax Office or the amount that is owed to you. When we jump to the year to date summary, we will be able to see at a glance whether we're running at a profit and loss. So let's just click on that. So if you scroll down here, you'll see that this is color coded. This nice aqua color is for here. Orange color is for the next quarter, purple, and then green for the last quarter. So across the bottom of this page, in the year to date summary, you will be able to see your profit and loss at a glance. And then down the bottom here, I've put this information into a graph. And the graph I know because your business is going to thrive will be going up and up with profit. Now jumping back to quarter one, let's just zoom in and edit this spreadsheet. First thing you'll need to do is go into the quarter one tab. See down the bottom left hand corner, click on that. Now to make this personalized for your business, probably the first thing that I would do would be to drag, drag your logo 
in here because it's always nice to see your own branding, right? Now I'm going to enter in income or sales for a pretend business so you can see clearly how the GST is calculated. So I'm just going to be quiet for a moment while I do some mock sales. Just follow along. Now let me digress for a moment and picking up the topic of making more training tutorials. Now I need you to be aware please that I am not a bookkeeper. Bookkeeping is simply a skill that I have picked up over the years. So I am not trained in bookkeeping. Oh no hang on a minute. I did do a bookkeeping course at Tate many years ago because I wanted that skill so I could get temp work when I was traveling through England. Okay, I'm getting off topic here. What I'm trying to, to get at is that I'm a marketer and if there is one thing that I know within marketing is you've got to know your numbers. So if you would like me to create video tutorials on how to calculate channel margins, how to calculate cost of goods, I could even do a conjoint analysis for you to work out which product offering your customers are more likely to buy. I can do video trainings on break even point, the list goes on. So if you require that for your lovely small business please do let me know and I'm happy to create those videos for you okay okay let's go in and just delete these rows because we want it to look nice for you and now we can see clearly there is the total of July sales, August sales and September sales with the GST calculated automatically for you. And then if we scroll down the bottom to our BAS reconciliation, we can see that our total sales are 103000 and the amount that we owe the tax department for our GST collected is just over $10,000. But we haven't put in our purchases yet, have we? No, no, no. Okay, let's pop on over to our year to date summary. And if we scroll down to our profit and loss, so we can clearly see our cash flow, because this is the whole aim of doing this book work. So we know how much cash at bank we have at any one time, we can see here that we have made a profit of over $103,000. And of course, we haven't done our expenses yet. But by showing you the total income of July, August and September, you can see at a glance how much you've made in each month. And then and you can reflect back on these numbers and say, well, what happened in September? Why did we make so much? And why didn't we make much money in August? We can look back at our marketing activities, work out what worked and what didn't work, which will help guide our decisions in the future. It's time now to get out that big box of receipts and I need for you to access all your bank statements for the previous year going back to the 1st of July. 
print off the bank statements and with a highlighter highlight the months and put them in order in a manila folder you should say now well done you to yourself because you're one step closer to finishing your bookkeeping let's open up the spreadsheets I'm in quarter one July August September and let's scroll down to expenses first thing to save you time I want you to think of all your reoccurring monthly expenses and write them up quickly in column B I'm just going to be quiet here now and I'm going to fill in some expenses for a business let's just say it's a okay I have a home business I mean, I work from home, I have a e-commerce store on, say, Shopify, and I rent my home. So that's sort of the basic things about me. Okay, I'm just going to input those recurring monthly expenses associated with my pretend business. Okay, I'll be quiet now. Now I'm going to input the amounts in the different columns. It is recommended you don't insert more expenditure columns. There are enough columns already created here for you. So instead of adding in more columns, simply rename the columns to meet your needs. And enter the gross amounts, that is the amount that includes the GST, because the GST within these spreadsheets is automatically calculated as 1 11th of the gross, 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 of the that amount in the GST column here in column T. Okay, I'll be quiet again while I enter in the gross, the gross gross amounts. Yeah, that. Oh, I'm just going to highlight here with the rent. I've said rent 10% by way of example. Because my pretend business is at home and I'm renting, I've calculated that I use 10% of my floor space for my home office and storage for all those widgets I'm selling on Shopify. So therefore I'll claim 10% of my gas or electricity. So over here, let's say I pay $5,000 a month in home rent. So I'm claiming 10% of that as a home office percentage of expenses. Now with my gas, I'll do the same. Let's just say it's $100 a month. So I'll claim $10 public liability insurance let's go to insurances and that's say 250 a month uh, I'll just pop the market stall in miscellaneous and the market stall is 130 and I have a business loan so I could buy all that stock and I'm going to put that in miscellaneous and my business loan repayment is a $3,000 a month let's go over now to column T and our GST. Even if you're not registered for GST and you are not required to submit a business activity statement every quarter, you still pay GST on your purchases, right? But not all of them. So for those expenses, you need to go into the GST column and delete the calculation within that cell. For example, repayment of a business loan, there is no GST on that. So I'll just tab over to the GST column, delete the equation and just put in zero. If you're unsure whether or not GST is included in the purchase, just have a look at the invoice and if the GST on the invoice is different from what these spreadsheets have calculated it to be, firstly double check that invoice and then go into the cell here and adjust it accordingly. Please know the sky isn't going to fall in if you make a mistake on your spreadsheets because you can always make an adjustment in the next quarter and if you're really, really, really confused and worried, just call the taxation office. In my experience, when I call the taxation office, and I used to call them a lot, the person that answers the phone really wants to help you. If you're stuck, if you're worried, just call the ATO. Okay? Got it? Good. Okie dokie, now that first step is done in our expenses where we typed in our reoccurring expenses and we have adjusted our GST accordingly. Now I just want you to copy and paste those reoccurring expenses and pop them in the rest of the months.
Thank you for sticking with me all this time. I think it's time for you to go and get a cup of coffee or go and hug your children. And then when you come back and sit down or refreshed, I want you to grab that bag of receipts. And whilst you're doing that, I'm going to fix up this because I realized I deleted those two expenses. Okay, I'm just going to fix up that. I'll see you soon. Hello again. Now that you have your receipts ready and you'll also have your bank statements close by, I'm sure. Let's just jump back to quarter one and oh, I've just got to insert more rows here. And note to self, when you download these spreadsheets, I will have inserted plenty more rows for you. So to save you doing this, there we go. I'm going to role play again and pretend that I have that Shopify store and my widgets, my product offering. Let's say I sell sterling silver jewellery with semi-precious stones. Okay, that's my business. That sounds like a nice business I'd like to have in my fantasy life. Okay, I'm just going to enter my big pile of fantasy receipts and again, just please follow along. Remember, these templates are yours, so they need to be personalized for you. So you feel special about them, you have some sort of ownership about them because you are the new bookkeeper in your new business. So I want you to really look closely at the categories across here for your expenditure. You'll see that I changed this expenditure column to say contractor because I forgot about Valerie. Valerie's my VA and who wouldn't want a VA called Valerie? One thing that I will tell you now, just to repeat myself, and I'm sorry that I'm repeating myself, a bit like my mother does all the time, she repeats herself. <laughs> Just look closely at the GST component of your invoice and if there is a discrepancy you just need to adjust it in this last column. Now that said, any concerns that you have just ring the tax office or just leave it until the next quarter. At the end of the financial year what I'm getting at is that your accountant can fix anything. Any other general questions that you have regarding the spreadsheets, how they work, please do make a comment below and I'll reply or there'll be someone else in this channel Perhaps they could help you out with your question. Let's all help each other. That box of receipts in front of you. And I'd also like you to grab 12 envelopes too and write the month and the year on each one. Make that A4 envelopes if you find yourself with a huge box of receipts. Don't sort the receipts. That's just a waste of your valuable time. Treat the box, say, like a lucky dip and put your hand in and pull out one. Input the details into your spreadsheets, then pop the receipt into the envelope for that month. 
Just pause this video while you input all your receipts and if you have a lot of receipts, just save this video and come back to it later and we'll get on with a very simplified bank reconciliation. I bet you that feels like a weight off your shoulders having those receipts written up and well done you. Now please place in front of you that manila folder that has all your bank statements within it and pull out the first statement from May, June of last year and get a ruler and draw a line underneath the last transaction of May and then go down to the last transaction of June and draw a line under that transaction too. Okay, now with your ruler, go back up to the first transaction of June and place your ruler underneath it and have a look what it is. In my pretend business here, looking at my pretend bank statement, my first purchase for the month is for my public liability insurance and that's on the 1st of July. And I should be a good little bookkeeper here and write who the uh, payment was made to and uh, what can I make up? QBE insurance. There we go little things. All the little things lead to big things, right? Just like this is a little thing, doing your bookkeeping. It's going to lead to bigger things, such as expensive accounting software and a team of bookkeepers and yeah, okay, that's uh, for another discussion. On my pretend bank statement here, I'm checking that the amount deducted by QBE Insurance is in fact $250 and look at that it is. So with my lovely fine liner pen here, I'm just putting a line through that $250 and on the spreadsheet in column C, you will see that it says bank rec. See that column there? So what we're doing here, we're cross-referencing our bank statement withdrawals with our spreadsheet expenses. They need to correlate, right? They've got to be the same. So unfortunately on Microsoft Excel, I don't know how to do a tick. If you've got the Google Sheets, I have put in a little tick box for you to place a tick. Perhaps a quick way to do this, well this is what I do, is I just highlight that row and go Control B. Looking back on my bank statement, the next transaction is a withdrawal for Officeworks, which I forgot to put in because I lost the receipt. And that was way back at the beginning of the month. So I'm going to type in Officeworks and searching my memory, I bought a box of fine liner pens and they were $4.95, which I'm putting in the Office Supply column. Voila. And that was on the 2nd of July. I crossed that off my bank statement and I bolded out on my spreadsheet. Again, if I was on Google Sheets, I'd place a tick there. So forth and so forth. Whilst you're checking off your transactions and feeling happy about your progress as a bookkeeper, I'm just going to snuggle my cat because he's in the way. Hello and welcome back. Your spreadsheet should be looking very similar to this now and your bank statement. Every single transaction should have a little line through it, including your deposits for your wonderful sales, which you will repeat the same process in the income section. And you can file those bank statements and those receipts away for the next five years. And yes, you must keep them for five years. Next step. See how over here in column A, which is your date column, just to make it look nice, grab all of them and then sort by date so they're in chronological order. And if you don't know how to sort, go up to the top to this ribbon here and go to data and you will see, see how it says sort here? Just click on the A to Z and it will automatically sort your dates in order. Now because we like pretty and we like things to be a little bit perfect sometimes, just highlight the rows that you haven't used and delete those out and same with the rest of the months. I want to show you very clearly the BAS reconciliation section and also how these expenditures will look on the year-to-date summary. So just give me one moment, I'm going to go through and delete all of this data. Now bring your attention back to July and have a look at the total that you have paid for your expenses for that month. Then I want you to scroll to August, have a look at how much you spent in that month and same with September. Now scroll to the bottom here and here 
in total purchases, that is the sum of those three months. And just underneath that, here is your GST, which is the sum of the GST you paid. And this figure here is pulled from, scrolling back up, the GST column. And bring your attention here to the due amount or refund for your tax obligations. This amount here, if it's a positive, this amount is owed to you from the Australian Tax Office. If this number is a negative, and if it's a negative, it will show up in red. This is the amount you owe to the tax office. Now, just to help you that one step further, this here is the due date of your BAS statement. So common sense kind of tells us that we should get out our calendar and mark in that date and perhaps put a reminder for two weeks before just to giddy you up to get your BAS statement lodged on time. The date that your BAS is due is included in the BAS reconciliation section of each quarter, as you can see here. When I lodge my BAS statement through the MyGov portal, I take a screenshot of the lodgement and I drag that screenshot into here. You don't have to be so pedantic, but it's if you want to do that, then I guess that's a great thing for you to do. Let's jump now over into our year-to-date summary so you can clearly see your tax obligations for your BAS on the year-to-date summary. And there we have it there. There's that $1,350. It's rounded up because the tax office is not interested in the cents after the decimal point, which actually contradicts what my mother always told me. Carly, look after the pennies and the pounds will take care of themselves. Kind of like that saying, hence why I've got a piggy bank there full of change. One day we'll smash that open. Okay, I divert again. I'm so sorry. And we'll just go back now into quarter one to check that that is correct. And we might just put the magnifying glass over that. So ladies, well done. You've made it this far. And in all honesty, that please tell yourself that that really wasn't that hard. And then I want you to tell yourself that you are now the bookkeeper of your own beautiful business. Congratulations. Now, last thing to do, as promised, we are going to jump into the year-to-date summary and have a really good look at this, and I'll give you a couple of hints and tips. Thank you. When you look at your year-to-date summary, all your glorious numbers are just there, just like magic. Now let's bring your attention to the business activity statement summary. At a glance, you can see your refund or your payment due to the tax office very clearly for each quarter, and then the total refund or payment made by you to the tax office. Let's scroll on down to the profit and loss statement. Here is where you will spend most of your time analyzing your marketing efforts. You know now how quickly and efficiently it is to input your receipts and your purchases. So that's a quick job. And because you now know that you must be operationally efficient and make a profit before you grow, I want you to spend a lot of time looking at the figures in here, looking over all your expenses by the month, by the quarter, and your total figure for the year. And when and if you write a business plan, you can include this profit and loss statement in the financial section. And another great thing about this profit and loss statement, you can just highlight this section here, okay? Then down the bottom, see where it says the plus? Add a new sheet in, rename it. Where is the rename there? Budget and forecasting. And paste that profit and loss statement in here. Then delete all these figures not on this page, delete them on the budget and forecasting page. Leave this page, okay? And estimate how much you believe you will be paying in the next financial year. So when you look at these different categories of expenses, let's just look at the top one that I have here, which is subscriptions, website, and hosting. Now I know when I look ahead, those expenses will pretty much stay the same. My government fees and charges will increase by 20% because I expect a 20% increase in sales over the forthcoming year. And why 20%? Because that is one of the SMART goals I wrote in my marketing plan. My drawings will increase, I will increase my advertising, my materials 
will go up because the purchase of my materials correlates with that growth in sales. Over the next financial year, I'll be employing more contractors. I'm looking at bringing in a business manager. Now, these are just examples of what I've already articulated in my SMART goals. So from these examples, you can see now why uh, I said that you'll be spending most of your time in the profit and loss section, analyzing and budgeting and forecasting for the future. And another thing, because there's always another thing there seems to be, and this will be the last thing. If you are seeking investors in the future, or if you want to get a bank loan, the investor or bank manager will want to see your profit and loss statement for the preceding financial year. And they will always request from you your budget and forecast for the future. And that's a wrap. My name's Carly Beedman and I thank you sincerely for giving me more than half an hour of your time. I really appreciate it. I understand that time is precious when you're running a small business. Running a small business takes a lot of work and for you to stop and learn how to do your bookkeeping, well, it's a really great achievement. I hope you enjoyed watching and learning. I certainly did enjoy making this video. It's my first instructional video. It was a bit glitchy. I'm sorry for that, uh, but I'm sure I'll get better as time goes on, as you will get better with your bookkeeping. As always, practice makes perfect, right? I wish you all the best in your endeavors to build a strong brand and leave a comment below if you enjoyed this and you got value out of it. And please do ask questions if you need any help. Thank you. Oh, and just one more thing because with me there always seems to be one more thing please do share this video with your friends that are small business owners because they may be struggling under a pile of receipts and need help with their bookkeeping cheers and thanks a lot